the threat to make Marxism or socialism an alternative to what we have yeah. relevant. I try to point out to the kids, uh, a lot of them have no interest in politics. They, they, quite a lot of over 18s that, uh, that have, have not actually voted. And they say, what's the point? And uh, a part of that is the fault of politicians as well, because they aren't providing an alternative to what there is. I mean, Tony Blair was elected Labour. And um, New Labour was actually not that different from the, the new right of Thatcher. So the British people had no alternative. Now, what Labour did there, they stole the Conservatives' ideas and implemented them as their own. But, I mean, the fighting fathers of the Labour Party were turned in their ways as the scene with Blair was at. Mm -hmm. I think that Corbyn is, is and, and John MacDonald is trying to do things a bit differently. But whether the system will allow them to do that or not, I don't know. Now, these are the ideas I'm trying to get across, you know, to, to people that, you know, there is an alternative, you know. You know, does capitalism work? Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. Well, it does work for us. And then the answer is no. It doesn't. No, no. It works for the boys at the top, all right. Mm. I think that's, that's something that uh, uh, I've been looking at things to do with hierarchies and that basically if you look at the hierarchies, there's a small number always at the top that seem mm. to be profiting from mm. everything. Mm -hmm. And the people that are struggling to get up there basically fall down, or the system is, is designed to go against them before yeah. they've even got there. That's right. I mean, YouTube is something that a lot of youngsters are sort of seeing as an alternative to the old form of television mm -hmm. that we have. Mm -hmm. And when you see Netflix and, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, people now watch YouTube like a television. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I noticed I, that some of the past H and D students were trying to get up to the four hundred thousand mark, mm -hmm. and were about to get there and get to the point where they could start to generate an income. And all yeah. of a sudden, it was like the rug was taken, and yeah. they had to start sure. all over again. You know, it's like they're perpetually having to try and get there, and then they can't quite. It's like there's a ceiling. It's almost as if there's a con there somewhere. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, think about YouTube. It's, it has. Obviously, many advantages for me. He likes music. I mean, mm -hmm. you tap on a song, and there it is, most of the time. Now, my music taste sometimes is a bit off the wall, and, and what I'm exactly looking for might not be on it. Yeah. You no, know, it depends who puts it up. But uh, it's a great way of introducing kids to music of the, of the, of the um, maybe 50s, 60s, 70s, or whatever. Um, it's also a good idea, I think, for aspiring musicians that they can showcase their talents mm -hmm. without having to go through written roller looking for agents and boys eventually you're up them off and that sort of stuff yeah yeah so what kind of music is it that you you, you what genres of music are you George, uh, any <laughs> anything anything and everything yeah, yeah. Uh, you know certain very wide range and tastes um i do draw the line at one or two bits and pieces i'm not a big hip-hop fan right just because i you know that's where i differ from seamus heaney he he he, he always reckoned that eminem was a poet i uh, i suppose if it's probably because not been brought up in that culture and not, yeah. not really uh, understanding the whole point of it. I'm sure it is good in its own way, but it does sell a bit. Well, I spent the last six years learning to play the fiddle mm -hmm. and the violin. Mm -hmm. and it's, uh, I read music, I have read yeah. music for a long time. Same here. But what I'm actually discovering now is that I'm getting used to finding the tunes without having yeah. to have the anchor of the music, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is really quite nice. Uh, yeah. And I, I know on YouTube the other day, I got fed up with watching TV, so I, I put on something, and it was um, Frank Sinatra and um, Louis Armstrong mm -hmm. doing something. And I actually pulled the violin out and started to yeah. play along and yeah. kind of go, oh, I'm finding some of the yeah, tunes yeah, here. Yeah, you know, it also helps if you've got a good ear for music as yeah. well. Yeah, but you're in good company. Yeah. Uh, um, and you've got a, a, a state of fantasy there on Paul McCartney. Right. Because uh, Paul McCartney can't read music. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It was George Martin that did all the orchestrations for the bass. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that, you know, so a lot of uh, a lot of musicians play by ear. You know, if you've got a good ear, you can pick it up. If you can tangle about and find the notes. Well, I, I, I mean, one of the interesting things is I, I, um, I actually started playing in church music mm -hmm. as well. Uh, and depending on which organist you've got, depends mm -hmm. on which key they play mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. And it's easy enough for them to transpose the organ, but try and transpose, you know, on, on the fiddle, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of go, Where, whereabouts is that? In fact, the other day I was playing, and, I, and where I was playing the notes was fine, but as soon as I had the open notes, they were all out of key. I thought, oh, my violin's gone flat. 
it was just that everybody was singing slightly flat <laughs> or slightly sharp one up. George Hill Yeah, ah, but it's fun and, and it takes a lot of the stress it does away. Really. Yeah. It does. It does. It's all part of learning to enjoy an instrument and that, you know. Well, uh, but I've been, I've been, look, I, when I was younger, I, when mommy and daddy were out working, I, I was only me at the time. And uh, I stayed with uh, an aunt of mine during the day, and her daughter was beaten smart. This was right. 1962, 63, 64. Well, obviously, before I started school anyway. And uh, that was it. Uh, I think Can't Buy Me Love was what got me started. Yes. Um, but definitely, there was no turning back one Thursday night. July, I think it was, 1972, David Bowie doing Starman on top of the Pops. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. That blew my mind. I didn't want to play for Manchester United anymore. Right, okay. I wanted to be a rock star. <laughs> I wanted to be David Bowie. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and that was it. And um, it hurt quite badly when he died, you know. Yes, you, you yeah. Don't, yeah. You don't expect your heroes to be mortals. You know? No, I know. No, no we, we've talked about sociology and we've, we've introduced music, which is mm -hmm. a kind of a, a, a social... I mean, I'm starting to get out now to a few sessions. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what I'm enjoying is the fact as an individual going into a group and actually being accepted within the group yeah. and allowed to play within mm -hmm. my competency, mm -hmm. um, which I think is, is really important. You mentioned football. You've mentioned Manchester United a short oh, time yes, ago. Um, could you... Talk a little bit from a sociological point of view about how those activities, the football playing uh, or the fans from a football playing and, and the music, how, how they work from a social perspective. I don't know. I, um, our friends on, on, on Facebook with a couple of boys from Belfast, uh, Jake Bournes and Henry Clooney, just uh, being several in the fingers, okay? Right. And, you know, Stuff little fingers were about when I started Queens. There was quite a vibrant punk rock scene at Queens, uh, masterminded by uh, Terry Hooley. And uh, I give Terry plenty of credit for that. Um, and the thing about it was that he, um, Terry used to say that, you know, punk was great. He said, it brought people together. It didn't know, it didn't matter what religion people were, people didn't know what religion. People were, you know, it was, it was a great leveller, and, that, and there's a great scene in Good Vibrations. I'm sure you've seen the film. Yeah. Where they're stopped by the British Army in the van, and there's a crowd of kids in that, and um, they're taken out of the back of the van. So I asked Sue what religion, and he says, I don't know. And I thought, you know, yeah, that's 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 good, you know. And, and music is, you know, music. Uh, I find it's it's therapeutic, it's nostalgic, it's, you know. Uh, just give gives people a, a who love it a, a real feel good factor. We have more on the way, so please subscribe to this channel and check out the link below if you'd consider becoming a patron to help us keep making more content. Thanks for watching.